Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to Trade Chat. My name is Panzer and today's video is just a vlog to catch you up on what is going on in my life. And first things first, I recently said in a video I wasn't going to be opening P.O. Box mail on camera anymore. So naturally the next time I went to my P.O. Box the craziest thing was there and I had to show you guys. So I, I not, I'm still not going to be doing regular P.O. Box unboxing videos but if I get something of this caliber of cool I have to show you, okay? Alright, are you ready? The fuck? Ugh. So this is a replica doom hammer that Travis sent to my P.O. box because he's friggin' amazing for my birthday. It weighs about 40 pounds and it's- oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh my god. It is very heavy and amazing and I'm super excited. I've got the base for it downstairs in my living room because that's where I'm displaying it, but I had to show you guys. I mean, I do have a small- it's right there. I do have a little doom hammer, like a handheld one that's plastic because it's a children's toy up here, but- uh, come on, I those are amazing. I always wanted one of those and I never I don't know I just never thought to get one But now I have one and I'm so excited about it. So thank you so much Travis That's probably the coolest thing that's ever come to my PO box that and the time that somebody sent me a rug from Blizzard Entertainment That was amazing, too It's not in here because my cats were obsessed with it and it was like a problem because it's a black rug But um, those are probably the two coolest things I've ever gotten anyways <laughs> Backing up and getting back on topic. So um, for those of you who do not know I've been streaming a ton like two or three times a week and it has been an absolute blast I think the thing I've had the most fun streaming is just World of Warcraft and since I started streaming World of Warcraft, I have gotten a new 110 who's already like level 43 on her artifact and um, working on getting concordance on that demon hunter so that I can get fell demon hunter Pepe. I'm super excited about it. Um, we also have been doing achievements and the holiday events and all sorts of stuff. So if you would ever like to come hang out with me while I play World of Warcraft, it's twitch.tv slash trade chat. Um, I believe I'll be streaming tomorrow. I don't like to set dedicated times because I feel like the moment I am required to do something is the moment I no longer want to do it anymore. But if I can just do it on a whim, I'll probably do it more often than I would if it was required. I have a problem with authority. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. I do, but I don't. Anyways, um, what else is going on? This is a giant banana that I have. <laughs> don't make a big deal out of it, okay? It's not a big deal. But yeah, this is my giant banana. And um, I feel like I had other things to say, but I mostly wanted to show you guys the Doom Hammer and talk about streaming. Oh, you know what else? I have so many oppor- Stay. I have so many opportunities coming up for us to meet if that's something that you guys are interested in. Like, for instance, I will be at Indie Pop, Indie PopCon from July 7th to July 9th, and I'm really excited because I have, like, dedicated signing events every day, and even on Sunday, I have my own panel where you guys can just come and ask questions. It's like a QA. and a I'll have something prepared on the likely chance that there'll only be two people there, and I need to carry the conversation myself. Don't worry. But if you are in the, you know... What would that be? Like Middle America area and you want to go to Indie PopCon? I believe tickets are still available, so I will have a link in the info below. I hope to see you guys there. And on top of the schedule that you can find on Indie PopCon for, for on Indie PopCon's website for meeting me and whatnot, um, I will also be tweeting and Facebooking and whatnot where I am so that you can find me. Um, what else is going on? I will be attending BlizzCon, as always, and there is a pretty good chance that I'm going to Gamescom this year. It's not finalized yet, so I can't say anything more than that, but for years and years and years, EU fans have been like, hey, can you guys come to Europe so we can meet you and Nico? And I'm always like, I mean, maybe. <laughs> Um, and it looks like this year there's a pretty good chance I will be going to Gamescom, so let me know in the comment section below if you are going to be at Gamescom, BlizzCon, or Indie PopCon because I want to meet you, I want to give you a hug, I want to squeeze your face. I won't do that if you're uncomfortable. I have a problem where I always tell you guys how incredibly like socially awkward and introverted I am, and I feel like I try to over <laughs> like make up for that and kind of overcompensate for that, so when I meet people in real life, ask them how insane I'm like on top of them it's so obnoxious I'm like hugging them and hanging all over them and like let's take a picture do I smell I probably smell and I'm sorry about that like I just am it's everything about it is a little bit too much but I mean I'm a little bit of an extra person <laughs> If I said I wasn't, I would be a big fat liar. So I hope that I get the opportunity to meet you guys, whether it's at one of those conventions or who knows, maybe I'll do PAX West again. I haven't heard anything as of right now, but I would love to do PAX West again. I have no interest in doing San Diego Comic-Con. I would, I would do it again if I was working, but I would not go to San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con for joy or New York Comic-Con. Those are the two craziest conventions in the entire world. I always tell people, they'll be like, oh, what con should I go to? Blah, blah, blah. I'll be like, anything that doesn't have Comic-Con on the end of it. 
<laughs> I'm sure there are good Comic Cons, but San Diego and New York Comic Con are just sheer, utter chaos. Um, but yeah, so I hope to meet you guys. I'm gonna have lots of opportunities to do that. I'm also going to see Perk. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Perk is moving and I'm gonna fly out there and help her kind of get settled in a little bit. I'm gonna get her audio stuff set up for Wowhead Weekly because you guys know that her audio is a little, it's questionable at times. And you know, part of that is that she has a Mac, so a lot of things don't want to like cooperate with her and another part of it is that you hear my audio and in comparison to her audio it sounds really good and it makes her sound really bad when truthfully it's not that hers is that bad part of it is that mine is really good and the jarring comparison between the two is just that jarring so uh going out there gonna help her get all set up for wildhead weekly where i think we're gonna do disney we're gonna check out the area that she lives in i actually know a guy who works at hbo so maybe it will be able to tour hbo while we're there i don't know how we could possibly make that into wildhead content but if anyone could do it It'd be us. Uh, what else is going on? I, uh, I'm going to Scotland with my friend, which I'm really excited about. We're just going for fun. Uh, there's not going to be like any fan stuff going on. That's just me and a friend, and we're going to vacation all I ever wanted. Vacation, have to get away. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. I haven't had coffee today, and I feel like when I don't have coffee, I'm actually worse off than when I do. And so I haven't had caffeine, and I'm a little bit loopy. Um, but I have had a pretty productive day so far. I got up early. I brought my dog to the groomers. I went grocery shopping, which I really needed to do because I am the worst adult ever and I hate grocery shopping, so I just never do it. Um, I do HelloFresh, which is like a, they deliver ingredients and then you cook the meals and everything's all portioned out. And it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, which is great because I'm not that great good of a cook and I feel like I'm a better cook. I almost dropped this chapstick. I feel like I'm a better cook because of HelloFresh. Um, that's not, I'm not sponsored. I actually pay a lot of money for HelloFresh. If you have any questions about that, just as a consumer, feel free to ask me because I have been paying for HelloFresh for two years, I think, and we really like it. But um, between HelloFresh and then there's a Target right around the corner from me and it's not quite a super Target. Like it's not a full supermarket, but it's a lot, you know, like you could theoretically grocery shop there. It just wouldn't be super efficient, but I get a lot of stuff there when I go to Target. Like I'll go to Target to get dog food or cat litter or shampoo, sh stuff like that. And then I'll usually pick up milk and eggs and bread and whatever. Um, so I very rarely go to the actual grocery store, which is sort of a shame because where I live, we have a really nice grocery store if you're in the, I don't know if it's all of New England or if it's just like uh, New York, but Wegmans is the grocery store we have around here and it's amazing. So I went to Wegmans today and I was there for <laughs> what felt like an eternity. And I just bought all of the meats Oh, I think all the time about going vegan. Not not because I don't like meat. I love meat. But I, I do understand that, you know, the biggest... Yeah, it was the biggest offender as far as, like, global warming has to do with the gas released from cows. And I, I get it. I get that, like, eating meat is not good for the environment. And I do do my best where I try to get, like, all locally sourced, organic, like, you know, humanely and ethically sourced meat. Um, I'm, okay, humane was kind of a weird word there because I understand that they, I'm really upsetting people. So I'm going to try to draw back a little. But it's just there's so much good food out there that contains animal products. I just, I feel like I could probably do vegetarian and it wouldn't be too terrible, but like, how do you give up ice cream and cheese and yogurt and ice cream and cheese? <laughs> so I don't know. I bought a bunch of stuff because um, we needed to kind of stock up and uh, I'm excited because now I got big racker ribs, like baby back ribs. I'll have Nick make ribs and I got him last year for his birthday. Well, it wasn't really for his birthday, but I don't know. I get him presents all the time because I just like him. Um, I got him a grill that has like a smoker on it too. So what he'll do is he'll slow cook ribs in the crock pot for like all day. And then right at the end, he'll put them on the grill to kind of get a crust. And then he'll put them on the smoker to add that kind of, oh, oh, so good. So like, it's like, I want to be a vegan, but ribs exist. What do? And then I also got, I like to get him, he really, he makes meatloaf and it's delicious. And um, he likes to put weird meats in it, like not just like hamburger and pork or hamburger and whatever. So I got uh, like ground uh, bison and ground lamb. So I thought he'd be excited about that. This is what happens when you turn like old. <laughs> All of your stories are about, I got this amazing organic grass fed bison meat today. Stop it, Danielle. That's not an interesting story that anybody gives a shit about. 
Um, the problem is I don't really have a lot of stories that anybody gives a shit about. <gasps> oh my god. I feel like I told this story to my stream or maybe on Twitter, but I don't think I ever said it in a video. So I was getting my nails done for a little while, and I have my nails done now, but I did them myself. Like, I, d I did not have them done. And the reason I didn't have them done is because I had the strangest experience the last time I went to get my nails done. Um, there was a movie on, like, in a TV that was kind of over my nail tech, and it was on, like... Not AMC, but one of those channels that airs really, really old movies, like from the 40s and 50s and TV shows like, you know, what is it? Make Room for Daddy and like I Love Lucy and very like black and white old TV shows and old movies. And there was a movie on while, <laughs> while I was there and it had uh, Marlo Thompson, who's Danny Thompson's daughter, which is... Danny Thompson founded St. Jude, and he was a really famous actor, and then his daughter was an actress, and she was the star of this movie, and I don't know what it was called, but it was a cowboy movie, like, it was a Western movie, and in the movie, they had, like, Asian people that were working for them, and I don't, they didn't, they didn't really, like, it, it was very racist. It wasn't, like, slavery or anything like that, but it was definitely, like, racist, and the I think the worst part about it is that Marlo Thompson was playing this Chinese woman, well, she wasn't Chinese. She was half Chinese and half Persian, maybe? I, which, in real life, she's Lebanese. So, I, anyways, but... So, she's not Asian in any way, shape, or... Well, t I mean, technically, anyways. Backing up. She's not Chinese, that's for sure. And um, so, I kind of just offhandedly said something. I'm like, that's funny. That woman is not Chinese at all. And she was like, yeah, it's an old movie. I actually like that movie. I'm like, no, it's a cute movie. I'm not, like, it's just funny. And she was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And, um... I don't know how that led her to tell me this next story, but she did. And so I'm sitting there and I was like trying to make conversation because I'm trying to like be polite and I don't like to, I mean, she's kind of like chit chatting with me, but she speaks kind of broken English and like I try not to be judgmental or rude. And like, if you're trying to have a conversation with me and you don't speak great English, like I am down to have a conversation with you because that's how you learn. You can't learn if you just keep to anyways. So she's like chit chatting with me about her kids and she's got two daughters and blah, blah, blah. And like, I asked her, I'm like, oh, well, when did you, how long have you been in America? Like, when did you come here? And she was like, oh, we've been here for about seven years and my husband and daughters are here and I'm like have you been back to I think she was from uh Vietnam maybe and uh she was like yeah yeah I've been back I go back like once a year and I'm like oh that must be so nice she's like no I like it better here and I'm like oh that's that's crazy to think of like what a culture shock that must be and then like to end up liking it better here she's like yeah well I just like it here because my kids are here I'm like yeah I understand that well I don't understand that personally but I get you I'm just being friendly and having conversation and then she was like well when I immigrated here I came on a plane but do you see that man over there and she like pointed to another nail tack and I'm like yeah and she was like he came here on a boat and they ran out of food and so they selected numbers out of a hat and his wife's number got pulled and they ate her and he ate her and now he's here and he's with because he ate his wife on a boat immigrating here. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I had no idea in any way how to respond to that. So I was just like, oh my God, that's terrible. And uh, it just was weird. And it just really went downhill from there. And I went home and I Googled it. And that was actually a thing that happened. But I don't think it happened to him. And I don't know why she would tell me that. Because, like, if she, if I had been, if we had had a conversation that made me feel like I had been off-putting or I had upset her somehow, I could understand her, like, oh, excuse me, throwing some weird stuff out to try to jostle me. But, like, we, I thought everything was really pleasant. And I thought it was being really nice. And I thought everything was great. And then all of a sudden she's telling me about her coworker is a cannibal. Maybe he is a cannibal. Maybe I should have listened to her. Maybe it was a cry for help. I don't know. But then, like, I was so intimidated that I made another appointment with her because I didn't want to say no because of what a weird thing to do. And then, like, later on, like, awkwardly called the place. And was like, I have a family emergency. I can't come. I'll call back to reschedule. <laughs> Because I just did not want to face her again. I did not want to face her telling me about cannibals. It was so strange. And, like, this was the day before that. The day before that, I was telling my neighbor Steve because we had to put a roof on the other house. I told you guys that. We had to put a roof on the house that Erica is living in temporarily. I mean, she's moving in, like, a week. But we had to put a roof on that house. And it was really expensive. And we were talking to our neighbor, Steve, next door, about having to put a roof on the house. And he was like, oh, yeah, not the house here, though, right? And I'm like, no, no, our roof's fine here. He's like, yeah, they just put that on maybe six, seven years ago. I'm like, oh, yeah? He's like, yeah, they did good work. I mean, except for the little disagreement that they had. And I was like, what? And he was like, well, I was sitting, having a cup of coffee with my dad, and we're just sitting at the table, and my dad's like, I think that guy's nailed to the roof. And I'm like, no, dad, they have, they have, like, safeties on the nail guns. Nobody can accidentally 
nail themselves to the roof. I'm sure he's not nailed to the roof. And he's like, I don't know. The other guy just left and that guy's still up there. I think he's nailed to the roof. So Steve goes out there and checks and sure enough, the guy's up there with fucking three nails through his foot nailed to the roof because him and the other contractor had some sort of disagreement and I guess the way they solved that was by going all passion of the Christ on my roof and then Steve went and helped the guy remove his foot from the... I don't know. It was a horrifying story and I need people to stop telling me shit like this. True or false, I don't want to know. I want to live in blissful ignorance. And I think the best part about that is that when I told everybody that story on Twitter, a bunch of people responded to me and they're like, yeah, my dad works construction. That sounds about par for the course. They always tell me stories that everybody else would be like, this is horrible violence. And they're just like, meh, lol. Which, uh, my dad was a contractor, and if he were alive, I would try to confirm that with him, but he also knew I was a sensitive person, so I don't think he would have ever told me stories like that, which I am grateful for. Thank you, Dad. God rest your soul. But, yeah. So that was... (laughs) That was all of that. I'm also super bummed because I'm going to uh, I'm going to see G-Dragon in Canada. That's not what I'm bummed about. But I thought that was this weekend. I thought that was June 30th. And it turns out it's July 30th. And I had already bought tickets for me and Nick to go see Linkin Park. And they're like front row center VIP tickets. And so now he's going to go with someone else so that I can go see G-Dragon, which I already had tickets for because I'm an idiot and I don't know how calendars work. But I'm taking it in stride. I'm taking it. I'm just jealous. I just, I would have liked to go. I know that, like, there are a lot of people in this world who hate Linkin Park. And there are super, there's just something in my eye. If you see me blinking wildly, there's something in my eye. Um, But I know there's a lot of people who, like, hate and make fun of Linkin Park. And Linkin Park is a meme and this, that, and the other thing. But I like Linkin Park. And it's funny. Because when I met Nick and he told me his favorite band was Linkin Park, I made fun of him. I was like, whose favorite band is Linkin Park? lol, you know, being all judgmental. And then I guess through 10 years of listening to them because of him, now I really like them. And I'm like an obnoxious defender and white knight for Linkin Park. But I'm going to go because I got something in my eye. It's very annoying. And I have to go pick up tickets from the groomers. And I really need a cup of coffee because I feel myself just fading fast. But yeah, I just wanted to check in and give you the what for and stuff. I am going to go. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, I believe my next video is going to be... I think it's going to be another skit video. I already have it planned, but I need Nico's help, so he has to be home, and he's, like, really busy with work this week. But, um, yeah, so I I will have a fun video coming up very soon. I also have... I'm ready to do Draw My Life. That is going to go up while I am at Indie PopCon. So that is going to be in the next couple weeks. Are you guys excited? You've only been waiting a year and a half. Oh! And while we're on the topic of St. Jude, this is a rubber band. I don't know why it's in my hand, but I'm a fidgeter. And everything that's around me, I'm just like, I need to touch it. I need to play with it. But, um... What was I saying? St. Jude. Uh, Last night, I finished all of the personalized digital photos. I haven't emailed them out yet because there's a limit with Gmail of how many that you can send, and those all have to be sent individually. I think I had, like, a couple hundred of them total. But I finished them all. I'm super excited. So those will be shipped out very soon, um, and then I'm going to have the physical prints printed out. I'll get those shipped out. Then my priority will be the marker drawings and then it will be paintings. There aren't nearly as many this year though, so it's not too bad. But yeah, I'm gonna go. I hope, oh my god, my eye. Ah! Ah! Oh, also, I started watching Rick and Morty and by I started watching Rick and Morty, I mean I'm halfway through season two and I'm planning on rewatching it all over again because it's very funny and very good. I like became numb to how much I hated the art halfway through season one because the writing is so good that it overpowers how terrible the art is because, all right, I say terrible. That is my opinion of it. I understand that it is an intentional, stylistic choice. I just don't like it. But the show itself is absolutely amazing. I find myself quoting it, like, every two seconds. My my favorite quote, my favorite, like, thing from Rick and Morty is just like, Aw, man. Aw, man. Aw, (laughs) jeez. Like, I love that Morty always says, like, Aw, man, Rick. Aw, jeez, Rick. Are you sure? (laughs) Don't you think? I don't know. It's so good. I'm going to go. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Thank you for sticking around and watching my video. I hope to see you guys in my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash trade chat. Follow me to get notifications to find out when I go live. Also, um, I usually post something on my Facebook and my Twitter. And, oh my gosh, Nick is home. He just scared the crap out of me. Did you see me jump? Um, Also, I've been posting on Snapchat lately because I made a Snapchat. I finally caved to peer pressure. It's trade chat snaps. Okay, I'm going to go. I love you all. You're my hearts. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.